Hello everybody and welcome! My name is Ursa Ryan and as you'll see it's 6.40pm which means only one thing. It's 40 minutes after the release of the second patch of Leaders and we're gonna go straight into it. The game's loaded, it's downloaded, everything seems stable. Let's get cracking. Before we get started as the Ottomans I just wanted to have a quick shout to say if you're not subscribed to the channel please, please consider leaving me a bit of a Christmas present and subscribe. It's free, you can change your mind later and oh my lord it's been magnificent as Suleiman himself Self. Seeing the channel growth over the last few weeks has been utterly ridiculous and if you've just seen my recent update video you'll know why that's a really important thing for me at the moment so thank you so much. If you're not subscribed please do so. The game. When I saw that Suleiman was coming back in a second form I got really excited because the Ottomans were one of my legit favourite civs. I rated them as S tier under the last form of Suleiman. I thought he was really really good and a different version of the Ottomans? Hmm, an interesting take. It's a very different take as well because I genuinely S tier thought the last Ottomans were fantastic and this variation, the Magnificent, it, it changes them quite a lot actually. For starters, no Janissary, which is honestly one of the best units in Civ. It was so cheap, it was so powerful and it could just wreck in that sort of renaissance era time. Domination wise, brilliant unit. You also had your unique governor which gave you I think a plus 10 combat strength bonus against fighting cities. It was just wonderful. You combined that with Great Turkish Bombard and you could get plus 15 against cities with siege equipment. It was amazing. That however is all gone and instead we now have the Magnificent and I saw this originally and I thought oh boy have you made a sieve for me? You shouldn't have because uh, Ursa likes a Golden Age. I am infamous in this game for just being able to pull a Golden Age out of every single orifice available. It's just a thing I can do. Actually that sounds a bit creepy than I meant it to but you get the idea. Any benefit to being in a Golden Age? That's a dangerous thing for old Ursa because I will stack that and I will take that through to the end of the game. What bonus do you say? 15% science and culture in every city. Hmm, I bet that's balanced. I also have a lovely plus four combat strength when not in a golden age against civilizations who are also not in a golden age. Now it's a little bit fiddly that one. If they're in a golden age or I'm in a golden age it doesn't work and I can tell you now that plus four combat strength is going to be useful at the beginning of the game and then after that not really so much. But I think it might be able to help us in the early stages against a couple of city states maybe or even against an AI on our borders. So we'll be able to use that a little bit at the beginning. Especially when combining it with the great Turkish bombard we keep that obviously Obviously we get production towards siege units and siege units gain 5 combat strength against districts and this is the best bit, the low key best bit about the Ottomans was the fact that you do not lose population on conquering a city. I cannot tell you how good that is. You take a city, it's economically still developed, it's working all its districts, it's working all of its like tiles, it's an amazing thing. I love the fact that you do that. It helps to keep the loyalty as well because if you think about it, a thicker city with more, more population, well that effectively makes it easier to keep all of the other cities going forward because you just got more pressure in that area and on top of that an immunity and full loyalty for every conquered city. It's an amazing thing that stacks up. Now the Grand Bazaar is a bank upgrade. I always have thought this would be better as a market upgrade but never mind. It lets you take more strategic resources, it lets you take more amenities for every luxury resource. It's a really good building, it's not going to change your game too much but that combined with the Turkish Bombard means that commercial hubs in stolen cities it is a really really good combination and the Barbary Corsair. This is possibly one of the best naval units in the game. No movement to coastal raid. I cannot tell you how good that is. You can decimate an enemy coastline with but one of these invisible boats. Uh, they are so good and so underused and one of the main reasons why the Ottomans are an S tier sieve. Now this magnificent ability just for 15% science and culture I'm saying now I think that's going to be really powerful. The problem is that Suleiman was really really good in his last form so we are replacing a very good thing with something that potentially could not necessarily be as good. I'm intrigued. Let's just get cracking. Remember to come to Discord if you want to copy and paste this exact save file onto your computer and play along with me. If you want to do it retro style, these are the details. We are playing continents and islands so I can get a good balance between land and naval combat. Balance start position, six player, small map. I think otherwise everything's kind of left the same. Turn one and you can see we've got a fairly interesting start. We're pretty central equator wise because we have rainforest here and that is a good looking tile. Look at that. Two food, two production, one culture. Lovely. 
We stood on grassland hills, which is a little bit unoptimized because if I were to settle on that tile, I would lose a production and the woods would disappear. So it's not brilliant, but in place we do have water and we have access to these two tiles, which are both next to reefs. And that's quite good. These are protected marsh tiles, but I mean, ah, oh, this is this is a start that screams, absolutely screams Etamananki. Like getting it? really difficult we have no real benefits and bonuses to early game production but if we could get it those would be good tiles i think this start really balances between whether we go for the snuffly truffly adjacency to go one uh, two food one production three gold it's for three gold or if we settle a little bit further inland maybe onto that floodplain tile a little bit riskier, admittedly, but it would give me proximity immediately to a two food, two production, one culture tile. That's a good tile. That would help boost me through to political philosophy as quickly as possible. I think, and this is the thing, we're on the coast, the coast is looking good, I want access to the sea, I think settling on the coast is going to be the thing, putting myself on a hill, yeah, I've got some good tiles around me, I think this is a good place to settle, we're going to just commit to settling in place. Let me know in the comments, would you have settled there? I, I feel like it's a good place, but yeah, well, we'll go from there. So we get a good gold start today. Now, the good thing about having lots of gold is that we can potentially levy a city-state. A levy city-state rush is a really good way of getting some early combat troops out and going to war quickly. And going to war quickly will be good because we'll get plus four combat strength to negate the deity penalty that we fight against normally. It's a pretty decent buff. I do want to go down to catapults pretty quickly. So engineering and getting ancient walls is quite an important thing. And on top of that, I would like, if possible, to put a stable up in the cities that I'm building those catapults in because you do get 25% combat experience from building siege class units in that city it's actually really handy getting an early great general is also a really really good move however we are going to go to war we will be doing kind of a domination or maybe even a science kind of fueled by domination run one of the two war is going to be important so rushing libraries and campuses is not a bad idea actually it's whether or not i want to go animal husbandry first in order to unlock all of this stuff or whether we go straight to pottery and then rush to see if we can get the Etamananki. It's a risky move, but you know what? Sometimes you just have to go for these things. I've got a couple of production tiles, not the best tiles in the world, but we'll give it a go. If we lose the wonder, I'll just throw it into a campus, you know? We'll do something different with that production instead. So I'm not gonna go animal husbandry. I mean, it's a really good thing, but I'm gonna go scout and try and pick up a free builder from a tribal hut. That would be the best thing for me to do if possible. We're also gonna go and see how much space we've got. Now, what's probably gonna happen is I'm going to be settled on top of somebody, knowing my luck, and we may have a little bit of a crowded start. Deserts to the north. Okay, so nothing too exciting to the north. Just keep an eye on this little map. If you start seeing red tiles appearing, you know there's someone in that direction. Coastline in that direction, however. It looks like the north, even though it's full of desert, is free for us. Here is the scout. I think rushing a settler is going to be the thing. And actually, it doesn't look like there's much continent left to the south of us. So no exploration can be done in that. No expansion can be done in that direction either. What tile am I working as my second tile? There we go. We actually have the coffee tile working now. This is good. Yeah, we're going to have a luxurious start. There's actually another coffee there as well, as well as Jade. Wow, we've got a lot of immunities in this start. That's three. Brilliant. Very good for early game gold. Very good for early game expansion i am liking this start already now there is a barb encampment we don't have any game modes on today i kind of liked the fact that when the new civs came out last time i didn't play with any game modes we just wanted to try out the civs pretty much vanilla and i yeah that's pretty cool so killing that barb encampment is not going to give me any secret societies what it will do is rush not bronze will help me to rush bronze working but it'll also get me military tradition boosted which is a lovely civic early game Always put God King in and Discipline. We're going to go to war with the Barbs really quickly this game. And I don't want to let this Barb encampment survive. I'm going to move my Warrior kind of round if I can to block any units being spawned in this direction. But we'll see if that's effective. Looks like the continent actually does go to the south. There was a little bit of a spit of land that I missed first time. So interesting. We'll go foreign trade. If I can meet people and hopefully be able to just draw people into joint wars, things like that, that might be good. Getting some maritime industries out and exploring with boats is also probably quite a good move. You never know. This game may be the game we galley rush. <laughs> I've seen weirder things. 
One thing I can say though, is that we really, really have had no tribal huts in the immediate area. Oh, looks like there's a barb galley in this sea already as well. So yeah, an aggressive barb start. Yeah, no tribal huts, quite aggressive barb placement. This is gonna be one of those starts, I think. There is foreign trade and a double source of cocoa. Oh, look at that. Oh, and that's a barbarian horseman that's appeared. Oh no, this barb encampment's going to get tough. I'm gonna have to fortify on that hill and hope I can survive. I don't know if there's gonna be anything else I'm gonna be able to do there. Uh, nobody, yeah, no one, no one is near me at the moment. Look at all these luxuries down here. This is a place to go and settle. Oh wow, a second barbarian horseman already. Oh no, this may be a problem for this warrior. I don't know if we're actually gonna be able to survive this. It's Germany though. So we have met somebody and Germany's actually a bit of a pain. They are quite an aggressive neighbor to have. No city states as well. Really, yeah, we've had a very strange start. Very odd indeed, but we're gonna get that writing sorted. Let's get sailing going as well. I'd kind of like to get some galleys, not just for exploration. It'll make Istanbul a little bit tougher. Oh my God, there's a third barbarian barbarian horseman oof right i'm going i mean staying on this hill is not an option we're gonna have to try and run away they are faster than me so i don't think i'm gonna get very far but we'll give it a good go my settler is gonna just go for a bit of a wild ride and we're gonna head south and we're gonna head into this sort of direction canaling across this lake this is a lake so we do have fresh water around this area i think that is not a bad option actually so if i were to stick a city on that tile and i could go for this one depending on whether or not i can safely get around but it's a little bit more cramped and then on top of the wheat there it's not not ideal but what i would create is a sort of navigable pathway where i can put my galleys through potentially go and attack berlin later i mean i'm thinking about attacking someone but really this is a it's a bit ambitious because <laughs> i can barely survive right now oh itaman anki would be so good on this start but the production Production's pretty poor. I've only got six of it in my capital at the moment, and I'm not entirely sure we can do too much with that. Lady of the Reeds and Marshes will make these tiles really good, but this is all just generic floodplain. Only a little bit of desert, and none of it really in my capital, so it's not the wonder-inducing thing that it could be. I could campus kind of next to the rainforest, which again is not, it's not perfect. Maybe I should just plot this out a little bit. If I were to go... For a lovely harbour on that tile and probably want to mausoleum it. Always plan a mausoleum. It's always worth it. We do want the commercial hub. I think I'm going to want to aqueduct this and I'm probably going to want to put a dam down. Which means that this is almost certainly going to be my industrial zone. Yeah, it's looking a little bit cramped. My campus doesn't really fit into any of this unless I were to pop it down there and then government plaza it on this tile. A little bit squisheroo. Hmm. Would get at me get a library down, which would help a little bit. I do need as much science as I can get. What do I settle for? Campus and library or a shot at the wonder? The wonder is going to be such a difficult stab. I think going just straight for the campus, it feels a little bit defeatist, but I think long term, this will be the thing to do. I could have waited for these tiles to get next to these reefs, but that would involve me going for irrigation and that's going to take some time to get out because we've had no tribal villages at all. Like it has been a very difficult start for that. So there's Delicate Arch, interesting, and a lot of German warriors okay the horses are coming towards me but i'm gonna just keep backing off for now i might be able to get home i don't know if i will to be honest if that warrior survives that is going to be an utter win and i'm gonna take it as such i like i, I am not deserving that warrior to survive right now we bit off more than we can chew they are chasing me, but they're chasing me slowly. I think I might actually get back here, which I mean again, I, I'll, I'll take that. That's that's amazing. We made it. Oh, view. That's that's mad. I, I mean, that's that's a win just in itself. That is a win. Yeah, and the barbs want to slam into the side of Istanbul. To that I say, sure, you do that. <laughs> Germany has already got iron. They are absolutely on this game. Yeah, fair play. Uh, this is not going to be one of those games where I can take over anybody early from a military point of view. So we're going to have to focus on economy, getting my science up, and I think a man at arms rush is more likely to happen here. Ooh, what's worth it? Do I get the trader to link the cities up and give my capital a little bit of production, or do I go for a sling? Uh be quite a long time before i get back so i will trade this yeah just a road amongst this sort of horrible terrain actually i think later on that'll be really helpful you know what? i might actually be able to make friends with germany i haven't met another city state so they may actually be friends yeah look at that i haven't got to worry about an early war from germany 
which means I can forward saddle them. So I shall. I really want to get as many of these luxuries as I can. And oh, there are some good settlement spots here. Just keeping an eye out for good campuses as well. That's already a plus five, which would be just delightful. So I think a city center there and then being able to just nab all of these luxuries, that's got to be a thing. We'll get that trader sort of send it there. We'll get the library in Istanbul as well as a builder really quickly. I was thinking about using my gold for early settlers or early things, but I think actually getting this builder when we can improve something. Actually thinking about it, I can't actually improve any of the tiles just yet. So a little bit early, maybe. I have just met Muscat. That is my first city state. How much troops have they got? 200. Ugh, I mean, the idea of me being able to take Muscat and then attack Berlin with it, that's just, that's tricky. That's never going to happen. The barbs are swarming my capital, which is not good, because if I get swarmed, I'm not going to be able to put a trade between the two cities that I have already, so I don't like that at all. A delegation, though. Yeah, if you want to give me three gold, Germany, I will take that. That is a lovely thing to see. But here is a slinger. Is that going to be a slinger kill? It is. Archery boosted. And also, there's another barb killed. And I've definitely got the bronze working boost, haven't I? That's lovely. Let's get some animal husbandry sorted. I want to marry my horses. Why not? Is a single warrior and a slinger going to keep me safe? Hmm. Let me think about that. Uh, probably not. So I should probably get more infrastructure. But am I going to just continue settling as it is? Maybe. Uh, let's just give it a go. I'm going to put some turns into building a settler. The earlier we can get a bunch of cities out, the better here. Pantheon time. Ooh, there's a lot of stuff still available to me, including reeds and marshes, which, again, if I can get these tiles, it's not a bad move. How much for those tiles? 60 gold and there's 150 to pick up one, and then 240 for both of them. I mean, that would turbocharge my capital. Absolutely turbocharge it if I could get them. That would be a four food, two production tile for both of them. You can't argue with that sort of early game city growth. It's a snowball game, Siv. We've said it before, we've said it many times before, and I would like to be part of that snowball. Other options include breathtaking appeal. Well, I have a couple, but the faith isn't going to really be super helpful for me right now. Goddess of the Hunt would improve these two camps. Now, that is an option, to be fair. We could do that, and that would lead to a pretty decent Temple of Artemis because we've got a lot of plantations, we have a lot of cattle, there's a lot of stuff here that could get improved, which would be better for that. I think if I went for Goddess of the Hunt, oh, you see, look, I would improve both of those tiles really well. It's a bit more of a gamble, but I think, do we lean on the Snufflies? Do we lean on the Snuffly Trufflies? Well, both of these are going to give me two food and two production. Both of those will give me four production. There is Marsh elsewhere, though. Not a lot of it near me, but a lot of it near Germany. So this is kind of the card for later. Deer, for instance, it's only three. There is actually one by this uh, potential city, so that's not a bad idea. Only the one truffles. What's another thing that puts a camp around it? Like honey? I don't think we found any honey, have we? No. No furs either. And ivory? I think that's the other one, isn't it? Well, there is ivory to the far north. Ah, nothing, nothing super exciting, I'll be honest. I think I'm going to go with my gut and go Goddess of the Hunt here because they are immediately available tiles and I haven't got to spend 250 gold getting them, which is really, really, really good for me. Oh, Shinto's already gone choral music, lovely. But I very much suspect that that will mean that I've got more gold to use on lovely things like settlers, which is kind of what I want to go for here. So we'll try that one. Temple of Artemis is a really good idea, but I do need bronze working first. Here we go. Let's see if this was worth it. Bam. Three food, two production, five gold from one towel. Oh yeah. And Germany will sell it. Oh, they will buy these snuffly trophies for 183 gold. Now that is a big deal. That is a big deal for old Ursa. That's a sort of save up for 440 gold sort of deal and rush a settler from Konya. I am liking me some of that deal, I must say. But it's just whether or not it's worth getting the gold per turn. That would be worth 270 or having the 180 now. But I don't need to sell it right now unless... Yeah, Germany's willing to buy the horses as well for quite a bit. I will just hang on to that though. I think we can probably time that a little bit better because at the moment, Konya is happy because of that luxury. So we'll just... Yeah, I think we can time this a little better. Luckily for me, this 
scout appears to be running in a different direction back to its encampment that's good i think we can probably kill it in a second i'll try and pin it with the other slinger but i'm pretty confident to go and send this route now i was thinking about going from istanbul to konya but it would be worth one less food and it's this city is the one i actually want to rush my campus through so this is yeah a pretty good place to put it here's my next amazing tile bam three food three production two gold yeah the early game economy is coming along nicely now and temple of artemis is a real thing that i could consider here is poland another person on this continent exchanging information on capitals yeah as long as i know where they are it's better for me they're up to the north interesting an anshan scientific city state that's good but extra science from great works of writing now that is something i can get on board with I appreciate this is really controversial, but I'm thinking about getting rid of this cattle because that would give me a bunch of food. It would get me to four population. That lets me build another district pretty soon, although we are nowhere near state workforce at the moment. It would let me build and, you know, work another tile pretty quickly in Istanbul. It's got the housing capacity. The alternative would be to go and improve that jade. And we can probably sell that in a second as well. I mean, Germany has still got the big deal they're offering here. Poland are buying horses, though. They are really buying horses. Okay. Hmm. I'd rather sell less than 20 so they can't do anything with them. But I will sell the horses to Poland quickly and then to Germany. And then I can sell my snuffy trufflies to Germany, get to 500 gold. And then I can go, yes, please, I'll buy the settler. Stop working that one. We can rush towards this pretty quickly. And campus wise, that's a decent tile, but it's basically on the rainforest. So I am instead going to pop it down next to this wreath here. So yeah, I just want that campus done as quickly as possible. I know I wasn't, I could have chopped that tile. Probably a little bit of a loss for me, but it's fine. Yeah, I'm going to go and work this jade. I think selling that has got to be the better option for me. Oh my goodness, an actual tribal village. We found one. Finally. <laughs> Man, that took a while. Also got this jade. That gives me craftsmanship. Perfect. And we've got the Pantheon. I'm going to switch now to urban planning, get the extra production. And I think we'll go maritime industries. I would love a floaty booty. You know, I didn't necessarily mean it, but I'm actually holding out for a dark age here. That will give me heroic medieval, which wouldn't be too bad an idea to be fair. So yeah, I'm tempted to go that way i'm so tempted i'm not entirely sure i've got a lot of choice in the matter i could get a floaty boaty out that would give me some era score but i think if we save it for the dark age we'll be doing okay here first governor i could take control of anshan but i think i'm gonna actually focus on going pingala to start with in my capital let's get the science out we need to get ourselves a bit of an industry and an economy scientific economy anyway oh experience the worst thing i could have got from that tribal hut it is me there's a lot of people going for early game great generals that's not good for old Ursa. I kind of want at least one classical era general, if I can, because they work well with catapults. Well, Germany wants to trade some iron. I'm going to hold off on that trade just for a second, Germany, because I believe... I don't know if I've got any iron. I might end up being on a source of about 17 of it, and in that case, I wouldn't necessarily want the trade, but I like the idea. Here is the settlement. I think I can settle... It's a new continent on Europe, so did give me a little bit of era score but i think that's fine i'm just gonna go straight for that tile and get the campus in a second let's put a turn into getting a builder but like this is going to be a good third city and a huge chunk of science for me bronze working where is my iron that is always a good question how much of it have i got not much there's a bunch up to the north though that is something i should probably go and settle fairly quickly Okay, cool. Well, we'll go and have a look at that then. And yeah, we can't resist the plus five campus, can we? And again, I know it's on rainforest, but there's no point hanging around to try and improve that for now. We're just going to take it where we can. And I will sell my horses as much as it pains me because Germany will give me enough so that I can buy a builder in my second, third city to get the Pantheon camp. Now, this will massively speed up how quickly that's you know, putting everything through. So that's, that's good. It's really good. You know, I think we're more likely to meet resistance from Poland in this direction. And I really want to go and settle near that iron so that I've at least got options on it. So yeah, the settler's going to go to the north. And there is my Dark Age, which is a little scary to go through, especially because suddenly now I'm losing this city. Oh, Germany, you have forward settled me, friend. Oh boy, that's 
not good. Who am I going to need going forward? Do I go for Magnus to go for Provision or do I go Victor because inevitably I'm going to end up picking up Garrison Commander for my combat? Izmir's going to be a pretty high pop, you know, production city. So I think actually going for one Victor. Now that will just keep the city loyal whilst I build the population up. Germany is golden. Yeah, I thought as much. So I actually don't get my plus four combat strength against them, which is a little bit of a problem, but never mind. Free inquiry, let's get those Eurekas. I only need 11 era score to get a golden age next time around. Oh, sorry, to get a normal age, I and mean, then golden won't be too much worse than that. Oh yeah, look, we need 13. That's fine. Once I get a boat, it's, it's going to be easy. Well, the barbarians are back, and in greater number than before. Well, luckily I've got an archer now, so they're not going to get anywhere near me. As well as the fact that you should never be too worried about barbarians around your capital, because they can't take it. There's nothing, nothing they can do. They're programmed to not kill capitals, so you're fine. You might as well just ignore them. Yeah, that's right. Just one by one by one, keep killing yourselves. Why not? It's a fun thing to do. Yeah, I think it's, it sounds really crazy, but I'm actually going to get rid of that cattle. Get myself to five pop. My capital's going to just be growing really nicely. Let's get the government plaza sorted so that Pingala can get a lovely upgrade. Get myself a bit more culture and science and all the good stuff. And in the meantime, I have a city over here, which is looking good. And this is going to start getting me some lovely galleys. Oh my god, please leave my stuff alone. Don't take my trader. All of this stuff is bad. Just leave it alone, please. There's nothing you can do to this city. Why do you insist on trying to kill it so badly? Oh no, they didn't actually kill the trader. That is a small Christmas miracle, and I'll take it. Lovely. Okay, well, we see if we can go chop that tile. I'm getting another galley sorted. Just a couple of galleys we can get exploring. We can get to see. Look, there's my coca. AI is buying. They're buying big on the old luxuries right now, but I need the luxuries. I need to keep this city a little bit happy, just at least happy, because I cannot afford the loyalty penalty. Seeing that, though, that's a lot of gold. <laughs> the temptation starts already. Oh, my open border sells for a lot. Hmm, yeah, okay, I'll sell for that. That's good, it's furry gold. This is the great scientist I kind of wanted. Libraries provide plus one science. If I can pick her up, really good stuff, but quite expensive. Actually, we're going to do one campus research grant and then the galley. God, we are everywhere at the moment. I am going left, right, up, down, all directions apart from forwards. Here we go, chop the rainforest. It's fine, no one will notice it gone and buy a tile for 70 gold to get the coca in order to then sell it for more than 70 gold. It's a profit and we'll take it. Another campus done and this one gives me three era score and I'm gonna go for, now this is the thing, do we go classical republic and focus on economy or do we go for oligarchy and focus on combat strength? Now I'm gonna be using siege equipment. I'm gonna go classical republic. I don't feel the need to do that right now. It's okay. Isolationism. This will give my trader a little bit more, but thinking about it, I won't be able to settle, and settling is good. I'm going to stick with maritime industries, urban planning, and go for builders. I think right now getting my science up is more important than settling, because I've already got four cities. It's pretty good. Yeah, first envoy counts as two. I think that's a good way around doing it. We're going to go mysticism, because if I need to get any scientist points, that is a good way of doing it. There is the first galley. Lovely. There's a lot of barb galleys in that area, so yeah, it doesn't strike me with much confidence, but we've got at least one, and that's what matters. Oh, and look, I have one charge left on my builder. What am I going to do with it? Oh, that's right. Invest in some coffee. <laughs> oh, come on, that was good. Ah, you know what? Sod it. We're going to try and build Temple of Artemis. We've got Herb Planning, Corvée, Maritime Industries is looking pretty useful for me as well. It's an 11 turn wonder. It's pretty difficult, but if there's anyone that can do this, it's Ursa. Also, Anshan gives me a little extra science and also extra for libraries when they come through. Really looking forward to that one. And look who we got. Hee hee hee. Libraries provide plus one science. Instantly builds a library. Now, I'm already hard building the library in these two cities. My capital hasn't got one. So I think I'll just get one in my capital. Bam. Up to 25 science. That is looking a lot better. Love it. And then also trade route through to Izmir. This gives my capital more food and production, but it also builds a really handy road. I'll take it. This is only my second tribal village. That is mad. Extra faith. Oh, we've had some wonderfully naff tribal villages this game. Where are you going to go, Scout? Where are you going to go? <laughs> I've trapped you. 
How's Turks? And every time I think I'm doing well in the game and I've absolutely wrestled the science lead, nope, you meet Aztecs and they're on 46, which is double what I've got, but never mind. They have orange. Hmm, orange. Yeah, lovely, I'll take that. And they also want my horsey snacks. Oh, yes, for a lot of gold. Thank you, Aztec. Yummy. Caesar. Okay. Normally a little bit aggressive, but that's fine. We're meeting people. Oh, they're the closer one to me. And the Aztecs are the other side of... Okay, this is fine. Right, okay. I'm going to have to go and rescue this warrior quickly. That barbarian is going to eat me for lunch. Gorgo. Wow, we've met everyone. 117 culture. Oh my lord. Greece is doing a Greece thing. There are 9.2 great writers per turn already. Oh boy. That's uh... They're not hanging around, but we've met everyone, so that means we get five era score. Yum. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, I am Salty Tech, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Sean Gritty, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalex, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amiri C, Henry, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray. Thank you for all of your support to help make these videos, and see you all next time. Goodbye!